In this video, we're going to look at the sign rule for fractions. In number one, the directions are evaluate each expression, and then what do you notice? If we have negative 8 divided by 4, that equals negative 2. We have in B, 8 divided by negative 4 gives me negative 2. And in C, we have a negative out in front of 8 divided by 4 which is also equal to negative 2. So we notice in each expression that if the negative sign is in the numerator, the denominator, or out in front of the fraction, they all equal the same number. And that is our sign rule for fractions. So whether the negative sign is in the numerator, the denominator, or out in front, they all equal. Here in number 2, it asks us to factor out a negative 1 from b minus a. And then they want us to write it in the lowest term. So we have a minus b divided by b minus a. And that is going to be equal to a minus b in the numerator divided by. Now if we factor a negative 1 out of b minus a, the a becomes positive and the b becomes negative. So when we look at this, we can see that the a minus b's cancel. And we get left with 1 divided by negative 1, which is equal to negative 1. And this leads us into the quotient of additive inverses. The quotient of a rational expression whose numerator and denominator are additive inverses is negative 1. So a minus b over b minus a is equal to negative 1, as we saw. In number 3, it asks us to write each rational expression in the lowest terms. So if we look at a, we have 5x minus 4 divided by 4 minus 5x. And these are additive inverses of each other. If we look at 5x is positive in the numerator and negative in the denominator, and 4 is negative in the numerator and positive in the denominator, so because they're additive inverses, it's negative 1. In b, we have x squared minus 3 times 2x minus 3 divided by 9 minus x squared. And if we rewrite this, we're going to multiply this negative 3 through the parentheses, and then I'm going to factor out a negative 1 from the denominator. So I have x squared minus 6x plus 9 divided by negative 1 times x squared minus 9. And now I can write the numerator and the denominator as linear factors. So I have x minus 3 times x minus 3 in the numerator divided by negative 1 times x plus 3 divided by x minus 3 and we can see that the x minus 3's will cancel and that will leave us with x minus 3 in the numerator and x plus 3 in the denominator and then we had this negative 1 in the denominator, and I'm going to put it out front of the fraction. In 4, it asks us which are true. In A, we have 3 minus x divided by 5 plus x is equal to negative x minus 3 divided by 5 plus x. So what I'm going to do is rewrite the expression on the right of the equal sign, and then I'm going to try and change it around using the negative sign and make it look like the expression on the left side of the equal sign. So we can see that the denominators are the same. So if we were to multiply the numerator times the negative, we would end up with 3 minus x divided by 5 plus x. So the terms that were positive in the numerator on the left of my equal sign are now negative on the right and vice versa. And now we can see that 3 minus x divided by 5 plus x was the original expression on the left side of their equals. So we can say that a is true. In b we have 3 minus x divided by 5 plus x is equal to negative x minus 3 divided by negative 5 minus x. And we can see that both signs are different in the numerator from expression on the left of the equal sign to the right and in the denominator in both expressions. So 
we only have one negative sign, we're only going to be able to change one of them. So we can see that once we rewrite this and multiply the negative through the numerator, so we have 3 minus x divided by negative 5 minus x. And when we look at this, we can see that our numerators are the same, but our denominators are different. So we're going to say that this is false. And that's all for this video on the sign rule for fractions.